Okay, this is Chris Busby. This is the Science Academy where I've got an, um, an office and I'm going there with Sean to talk about the latest developments in the test veteran case in the United Kingdom. There's very important developments which might result in, in something happening to me. So I want to say a few words about that. I'm here today with uh, Professor Chris Busby and we're just going to discuss some upcoming developments in the British uh, nuclear test veterans case. Um, uh, Chris, uh, can you give us an update please? Okay, well we're sitting here on the on this 15th floor of the Science Academy. This is Riga spread out beneath us here. I want to say a few words about some developments in the, in the nuclear test veteran case and also in another case I have out against the Ministry of Defence, which is a submarine um, crew member on a nuclear submarine who died of um, uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So I've got two cases out against the Ministry of Defence and, and they are now in a position where they're finding it very difficult to, to win, to, to oppose what it is that we're doing. And that's what worries me a bit because the, the most dangerous animal is the animal that is cornered or wounded. And I just want to, to, to briefly say that um, if, if, I get, if I get found having committed suicide or in some strange situation where I'm dead, you can assume that somebody's killed me because I'm quite happy. I don't have any intention of killing myself. Or I'm enjoying myself, really. You know, and, and what I'm doing against the Ministry of Defence is, is, is basically winning. And this is an enormously important case, as they, as they have actually stated in their letter to the judge. So here's the two cases. The, the, the one important case is, is a, a case in Scotland for this, as I said, this submarine uh, crew member who died of non-Hodgkin lymphoma and um, the, uh, the widow uh, tried to obtain a pension, of course, war pension, and the Ministry of Defence refused because they said that the, he couldn't have been exposed to radiation and so forth. Um, and one of the things they said was that non-Hodgkin lymphoma is not caused by radiation. Now, at the time that I was helping, long ago, some years ago, I started this case and, and I wrote a report for the widow in which I showed that non-Hodgkin lymphoma was caused by radiation. There's a huge scientific literature showing that that's the case. So the Ministry of Defence is saying that it's not caused by ionising radiation, it can't be, and the literature shows that it can be. Anyway, the point is that in the case, the, when it was heard, the original case was heard, um, the judges, the tribunal judges, said that they weren't allowed to look at my data because I'd been excluded by the British government as an expert witness. This happened in, in 2014 when, I was, uh, when a case was brought against me in the High Court in London to have me excluded as an expert witness. Now, what the Scottish judge has now done is he said that we can appeal this decision in the Scottish court. And he's, and he's sent seven questions to the Ministry of Defence that they have to answer about whether it's fair to exclude evidence and a whole load of other things relating to my evidence. Because at last we found a judge that realised that actually if you exclude evidence from a case, it's a bit like the Soviet Union. You know, you can win the case because there's no evidence there, because you've excluded it and that can hardly be just. However, that's put the British uh, Ministry of Defence on the back foot and they're freaking out. They have one month now to respond to this and to answer the seven questions, and then I have a, a month to respond to their response. Then it, has, then it goes to court in Scotland. But they have, they have to bring their evidence now again under Scottish law, which is not the same as English law. So although they managed to exclude me as an, a, a witness under, as an expert under English law, because they said I was biased, 
my bias being that I believe ionising radiation kills people. That's my bias. Okay. Um, they now have to prove that under Scott's law, which is not quite the same thing. So that's the first case. Second case is a, is a test veteran uh, carried over from the test veteran cases that happened in 2016, where I was a representative for two of them. And in this case, I've brought two very eminent experts in as experts, and I'm acting as the uh, representative uh, of a veteran who died from pancreatic cancer. Um, and the Ministry of Defence have brought in uh, an expert called Dr. Braidwood, who is the, all they have left, because it, not, nobody else will stand up on their hind legs and be, and be cross-examined by me. So they brought in Anne Braidwood, who wrote a report. But unfortunately for them, in the 2013 case, this same Anne Braidwood ad ad admitted under oath that she wasn't an expert on anything. <coughs> so I've written to the judge saying that you can hardly allow the Ministry of Defence to use this woman as an expert when she herself says she isn't one. So that also is hanging in the air too. So in other words, they've got two pistols pointing at their head. And that worries me slightly because it seems to me the only way out of it is to get me. And it's not as if this is, this is some kind of fantasy because I was arrested for no good reason in September and, and, and put into handcuffs and thrown in a cell um, on a completely trumped up charge about manufacturing explosives for which there was no evidence whatever. And the police broke into my house without a warrant and, uh, and they car carried out all sorts of actions which were strictly illegal. So we know the world that we're living in now is not one that, um, that, 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 that is, is honest and just and secure. And I'm just saying in this little short video that if you find me like David Kelly sitting up against a tree with my wrists cut and a, and a suicide note saying, I can't take it anymore, don't believe it, because I can take a great deal, and I'm quite happy, and I'm okay. And this is a beautiful town. Have a look at this town spread out beneath us, and that lovely church, that Orthodox church down there. And the snow is falling gently, and the world is a beautiful place that's being destroyed by some evil people. And I'm going to stand up and fight them, because somebody has to. Thank you for listening. Well done, Chris.